We are currently more than halfway through the 2023 FRC build season. And now I'm going to pause to let you just breathe through your panic attacks. Deep breaths in and out. There you go. We're less than a month away from the start of competition and teams have been making strides in their builds for this year's challenge. All in all, this year's challenge is pretty mid. I hail from a time when we tore down castles and long distance some frisbees. Don't get me wrong, we still had to stack trash cans on top of some more trash cans with no possibility of defense whatsoever. But even compared to the recent years of shooting balls or yeeting cubes, this game doesn't seem all that exciting. We've still come a long way from tennis balls and corn or game breaking carpet shredding robots, but this theme is still scraping the bottom of the barrel a bit. But if there's anything to note from FRC teams, it's that they routinely impress me with what they're able to come up with. Anytime you think you've seen a robot do it all, they will buddy climb, suction pump, or tug of war it out. Not only do FRC teams raise the bar, they will build a robot to jump up and catch it. Everyone noticed that FRC used balls for the past couple years, so it makes sense that they would switch it up and have two completely new game pieces. And you can't sleep on either of the elements if you want to compete a three in a row. You need a robot that can pick up cubes and cones, which teams seem to be doing. But the strategies that teams go with will be the intriguing part, to say the least. Maybe not yeet the cubes, but you never know what may work for one team and what might not work for another. Since there are only 27 places for a team to score, we will see max scores hit by, I'm thinking week four, because that's when the cheesy poofs play, but anything can happen before that. So while this game isn't the most exciting, I think the end game will be. Watching 118's every bot attempt the balance shows that it's gonna be a tough one to get multiple bots up there. Robot in three days teams are always favorites to watch to get build ideas from. With Longo Boy extensions, meaning the ability for your robot to have an arm reaching 48 inches outside of your bumper perimeter, I have a feeling we could see some Fs during matches. I also really love the return of Cooperation. Wanna know the last time we had Cooperation in FRC? 2015. In what was then called the worst game ever, we saw crates get stacked on the center divider to benefit both teams. As much as I want to see some triple Cooperation balances like 2012, eh, I'm taking what we can get. The one thing I definitely am looking forward to is the matchups. As you know, I only recap the tournaments that give you a ticket to Worlds, those being regionals and district championships. Guess how many are scheduled? 71! I swear that number will continue to follow me. Teams competing in the district model will not be able to qualify for Worlds by winning a regional. Kind of like how we saw the Robonauts win the Bayou Regional last year. The regional win would still count, but a wildcard spot would open up for another team to go to Worlds. This will be fair so the teams that usually dominate in a district model can't also dominate at a regional because while the district teams will still have an opportunity to qualify for Worlds, some teams only compete at one regional due to budget or due to time. So this change could give more opportunities for teams to make it. I will see you all for the week one recap after week one has happened. You still have again about a month, so deep breaths, just, just keep doing what you're doing. Good luck teams, remember to drink water, get some sleep, and remember, gracious in victory, professional in defeat. Amen. Central Cone.